Welcome to Vintage Toys. This is part one. A Mark's Mystery Spaceship from the 1950s and 60s. This series features the very modest collection I have of toys that I used to have when I was a child. With the exception of this one, I never had one of these when I was a child, but a friend of mine did, and I really wanted one. So I bought one via eBay recently, and here it is. Time to look inside the box. The first thing that I see is the instruction manual. Then underneath the instruction manual is the mystery spaceship itself. This is not just a spinning top, it's much more than that. It's actually a gyroscope. And it's quite unlike any gyroscope I've ever seen. I had one of the very small ones, and they were quite clever, educational and entertaining. This example of a Mark's mystery spaceship is in good condition for its age, which is just as well because it wasn't cheap. Most of the ones that you see on the market are damaged, and the plastic windows are broken off, but this one's completely intact. It could do with a slight clean. So what is it and how does it work? Well, the first thing you do is wind it up like this with the handle. You start very slowly and get faster and faster and faster, and this spins the gyro inside. The gearing is quite smooth on this and it runs well. Once the gyro is spinning at quite a high speed, this old toy feels really strange when you handle it. It will balance on its end like this for quite a long time until the heavy rotating disc inside stops completely. When I place it on the table in this position, it just spins and gets faster and faster until the outer casing tries to get to the same speed as the inner rotor. And in this clip, I put it back on its end and the rotor is hardly revolving and it settles down in a very odd manner. Similar, I suppose, to what happens when you spin a coin. But this one, when it finally settles, carries on rotating for a while. The instruction sheet with this toy is very comprehensive and, in its own way, subliminally educational. Have a look at some of the things shown in the instructions as to how the thing works and what it's capable of doing. I never did get it to balance successfully on the edge of a knife, though. In the box with the spaceship itself were quite a few accessories, including a generous amount of aliens. I've never seen so many plastic aliens in one place. The two blue rockets and the launcher at the back are not part of this kit. Apart from the aliens and the rockets, you also get a moon base stand, a central shaft, and a fancy forked fitting at the back. And as if by magic, the mystery spaceship will balance on the end of this post. These toys come up for sale very frequently on eBay, and as I mentioned earlier, they are quite expensive these days. But the ones from the USA are much cheaper. In this part of the clip, the rotor has nearly stopped spinning, but the spaceship still manages to balance quite well on the shaft. I'm going to stop it here before it falls on the table. When I fit the fork attachment to the column on the moon base and wind up the gyro, and by the way, you have to be careful doing this and build up the revs slowly. The spaceship doesn't do much on this special fork until you start to try and rotate the fork and now look what happens. When you get the rhythm right, it really does start to spin. I have several 1950s, 1960s vintage toys and the thing that surprises me is how small they are because in my mind's eye, the toys I had as a child were very big. But they're not, they're quite small. And that's because when I first saw them, I was quite small. In early January 2021, I will be 68 years old. And I first saw one of these when I was 11. I remember it well. I went round to a friend's house and there on the settee sat quite a large yellow flying saucer. Time to wind it up again. And once again, I'm warning you, if you're playing with one of these, don't put a lot of pressure on the mechanism. Make sure you start the winding process slowly and get faster. There are many suggestions what to do with this on the instructions, including attaching a piece of string like this, or winding it up, putting it in the box and handing it to a friend, which probably explains why so many of these are damaged, as when you hand a box to someone and it feels like it's alive, they're very likely to drop it. After a while my arm ached by holding it aloft, so I fitted it back to the stand. So I was at my friend's house when I was 11 years old, marvelling at this wonderful toy, I'd seen them advertised, I think, in the back of Superman comics that I used to read at the time, but they weren't very common in my local toy shop. I offered to swap my friend a board game for it. So the next day, I arrived at his house, and he wouldn't swap it for the board game. 
Instead, he swapped me a book for the board game, which I still have. And the book is called The History of Torture Throughout the Ages, with photographs and engravings and a lot of text. On the inside of the front cover was a warning, and it said, This book is for members of the legal and medical profession only. As an 11-year-old schoolboy, I didn't fall into either of those categories, but nevertheless, I read it from cover to cover. So, looking on the bright side, I never got my mystery spaceship at that time, but learnt a lot about how to torture people in the most horrendous ways possible. The Spanish Inquisition section was very interesting. That's the mystery spaceship and all the accessories now safely back in the box. I bought a second one of these. Here it is. It's not in very good condition. When you wind it up, the gears don't make a very good sound. I bought this second one to pull apart, so I can show you on this video what's inside. The thing is made from polystyrene and it's designed to snap together. But at some time in the past it looks like someone's taken it apart and made a bit of a mess of it, broken the location lugs off and then they glued it back together using adhesive. And because it's made of polystyrene it's not very strong so I cannot lever it apart. As this one was very cheap and I bought it specifically to take apart, I'm using my Proxon motor tool with a cutting disc. I'm cutting all the way round, but as you can see, it's melting the plastic. Finally, it separates into two halves. You can see the rotor clearly, which sits on the gearbox. And the gearbox isn't in very good condition. Some of the gears are a bit chipped. But I'm not bothered about that. I just wanted to show you what was inside one of these. I thought it would be a good idea to lubricate the moving parts, but this is not the best stuff to use. Grease is a bit thick and slows down the rotor. But it really doesn't matter because I'm only keeping this for spare parts for my other one. Assembly is very quick and simple. I press the tabs on the gearbox into the slots on the lower half and bend them over. I applied some grease to the gears in the gearbox as well as the gear and the shaft on the rotor. And here it is reassembled with a big gap all the way around it. Using a small blowtorch and a piece of brass held in a pair of surgical forceps, I push the piece of brass into the gap at various points around the circumference. And once I'd made quite a few holes in the plastic using the heated piece of brass, I wound up the spaceship to make sure that the rotor revolved, and it did. That told me that the alignment was OK, so here I'm using some JB Weld, which is a two-pack epoxy, to fill the gap. Once I'd gone all the way around the slot in the edge, I thought I would rub down the JB Weld and paint it, the same colour as the rest of the spaceship, so it looked OK. But before I left the JB Weld to cure, I wiped off the surface using a cloth and some white spirit. To finish off this video, I thought I'd give them both a run on the kitchen table. And there you have it, what's inside a Mark's Mystery Spaceship. And that's it. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it interesting. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.